Hey yo, welcome back to Cartoon Mania. Today we've got a complete rundown of the show Jackie Chan Adventures, from its humble beginnings to the grand finale. Now, before we proceed, let's set some context. This is Jackie Chan, an archaeologist and martial artist who lives with his uncle who runs an antique shop. Jackie wants to locate a set of magical talismans that hold great power. These talismans are sought after by dark forces of the world, particularly the ancient and evil organization known as the Dark Hand. Jackie is joined in his adventures by his energetic and intelligent niece Jade, his uncle, Uncle, yes, that's his name, who is a wise and eccentric antiquities expert, and several other characters, both allies and adversaries. Together, they embark on a globe-trotting adventure to prevent the misuse of the talismans and to thwart the plans of the various villains who seek them. Now, let's dive into the episodes. The first episode begins with Jackie Chan obtaining a shield from a Bavarian castle, only to wake up the next day to the surprise that his niece, Jade, will be living with him for a year. Finn, an enforcer for the Dark Hand, along with Chow and Ratso, approaches Jackie to buy the shield, which ultimately leads to a confrontation. Later, Jackie's investigation leads him to Section 13, an underground facility where he learns about the shield's powerful incantations. Dark Hand Valmont, with the help of the demon sorcerer Shen Du and Shadow Khan, tries to obtain the shield and sends Toru to deal with the matter. Meanwhile, Jade, showcasing her resourcefulness, sneaks into Section 13 to get in on the whole deal, which is super impressive for her age. When Uncle is kidnapped by Toru, Jackie attempts to exchange the shield for Uncle's release. But Jade cleverly removes a talisman from the shield, turning the tide in their favor and highlighting her valuable skills. While dining in a Chinese restaurant, Uncle recounts the legend of the 12 talismans to Jackie and Jade, revealing that each talisman possesses unique magical powers. Jackie must obtain and safeguard all 12 before the Dark Hand gets his hands on them. Later, Jade accidentally swallows the rooster talisman, and chaos ensues when the Dark Hand's enforcers arrive in search of it. Jackie must obtain and safeguard all 12 before the Dark Hand gets his hands on them. Get it? Jackie fights the enforcers while Jade, unknowingly imbued with the talisman's power, escapes their pursuit by unintentionally discovering her ability to levitate. The enforcers kidnap Jackie and Jade, discovering that the talisman is inside Jade. In a showdown at the Helm's Fish Cannery, Jade, now possessing the power to levitate objects, helps Jackie escape from the Dark Hand. Ultimately, they return to Section 13, where Jade's stomach is pumped to retrieve the talisman, leading to the decision for Jackie and Jade to live in the super-secret underground base due to the ongoing threat from the Dark Hand. Jackie travels to a Mexican pyramid in pursuit of the Ox Talisman, and identifies it on a mask worn by the wrestler El Toro Fuerte. The Dark Hand interferes, prompting Jackie to enter the ring, hoping for a customary unmasking. However, El Toro, unexpectedly strong due to the power of the talisman, defeats Jackie. The Dark Hand seizes the talisman and kidnaps Jackie, and Jade urges El Toro to help rescue him. They confront the Dark Hand on a plane where Jade, wielding the talisman, keeps it aloft. After a crash landing, El Toro and Jackie battle Toru and get their asses whooped, only for Jade to turn the tables using the talisman. Ah, once again, Jade saves the day. Jackie Chan attempts to secure the snake talisman from a New York City museum before the Dark Hand, led by Valmont, can steal it. Encountering a female thief named Viper, both end up swapping loot bags during a fight, leading to Jackie's arrest by the police for jewel theft. Viper discovers the power of the snake talisman she unintentionally stole, which grants invisibility. She frees Jackie from prison, initiating a trade for the counterfeit snake talisman. However, when the Shadow Khan attack Viper for the talisman, a skirmish atop a super moose balloon ensues during the Thanksgiving Day Parade. Jackie, Viper, and Jade defeat the Shadow Khan, but the talisman turns the Statue of Liberty invisible. Viper, despite owing Jackie, keeps the pink puma diamond she stole, leaving Jackie with a mysterious debt as the police arrive to inquire about the missing statue. In the next three episodes, Jackie obtains three more talismans. The rabbit, the dragon, and the rat, and all of the collected ones are stored in Section 13. After Jackie secures the horse talisman from the Himalayas, Valmont and Shen Du devise a cunning plan. Learning of the talisman's unique power to expel sickness, Valmont poisons Jackie, 
demanding all the talismans he has collected in exchange for the antidote. Jackie refuses, knowing the consequences, and Jade, desperate to save him, attempts a daring theft of the talismans from Section 13. In a dramatic confrontation atop Koi Tower, Toru takes the talismans but is unknowingly healed by the horse talisman's power, curing his cold. In a surprising twist, Jade triggers the horse talisman's magic, restoring Jackie to health. Grateful for her choice, Jackie forgives Jade, recognizing the difficult position she was in, and they cleverly spin the story for Captain Black, highlighting Jade's predicament in the daring rescue. After recovering the monkey talisman underwater, Jackie and Jade unintentionally activate its power, transforming Jackie into a yak. A storm hits, capsizing their boat and leaving them stranded on an island. Jade discovers the talisman's ability to transform objects into animals, but loses it to a mischievous monkey. Jackie and Jade separately encounter the enforcers, leading to chaotic transformations between animals. Despite a temporary setback, Jade retrieves the talisman, using it to turn the enforcers into monkeys and escape. Jackie retrieves the dog talisman from a windmill in the Netherlands, but faces new challenges when Toru and a formidable new enforcer named Hak Fu join forces. Back home, Uncle uses the dog talisman to regain his youth, revealing enhanced combat skills that surprise Jackie and Jade. In Bavaria, Jackie discovers that the pig talisman is associated with a clock tower pig, leading to a confrontation with Hak Fu and Toru. Uncle showcases his rejuvenated abilities, defeating Hak Fu and recovering both the dog and pig talismans. Despite the chaos caused by their adversaries, the Chants succeed in safeguarding the powerful artifacts. At a county fair in Texas, Jackie and Jade search for the tiger talisman, which ends up in a pie during a pie-eating contest. The talisman is accidentally bitten into by an elderly contestant, spitting it in two and dividing Jackie into separate yin and yang personas. One Jackie is a timid, peace-loving version, while the other is aggressive and assertive. The two refuse to reunite, leading to chaos as they interact with Uncle Jade and the Dark Hand. The Dark Jackie joins forces with the Enforcers, creating complications. Jackie Light is captured and Jackie Dark strikes a deal with Valmont offering the talismans in exchange for wealth. Jade and Jackie Light team up to rescue Jackie Dark and prevent the Dark Hand from obtaining the talismans. Ultimately, Valmont unwittingly reunites with two Jackies, unintentionally reviving Shendu in the process, marking a significant turning point in the ongoing struggle over the powerful talismans. Shendu, now a powerful dragon, wreaks havoc in New York after reclaiming the talismans. Valmont's attempts to control Shendu fail, leading to the arrest of the Dark Hand by Captain Black. Jackie, Jade, and Section 13 plan to confront Shendu at his palace in China. Armed with a magic bomb, Jackie faces Shendu but struggles to remove the rat talisman. Jade joins the battle, using the dog talisman to neutralize Shendu's immortality. Jackie seizes the opportunity to extract the rat talisman, turning Shendu back into a statue. In a surprising move, Jade uses the dragon talisman to obliterate Shendu. The palace crumbles and Section 13's escort expresses concern about disrupting the balance of light and darkness. After some time, Jade returns, permitted to stay with Jackie, Uncle, and Toru for another year. Oh, just for some context, Toru was betrayed by Valmont, so he has turned to the good side and lives with the chance now. Jade discovers Toru's despondency about his upcoming visit to his critical mother, who clashes with Uncle and disapproves of Toru's life choices. Toru's encounter with the Okonowa crime family reveals their interest in stealing the Kyoto octopus during the Japanese Cultural Expo. Toru, initially appearing to align with the criminals, secretly warns Jackie about the impending attack. The Yokonova kidnap Jackie and Toru and demand the octopus from Uncle in exchange for their release. However, the situation takes a turn when Toru's mother joins the fight revealing surprising combat skills. Jackie, Toru, and Jade escape the clutches of Yokonowa, and Section 13 intervening to apprehend the criminals. Toru's mother expresses satisfaction with her son's safety, leaving Jackie to navigate the ongoing tension between her and uncle. In a twist of fate, the Dark Hand relocates the Helmsfish cannery, utilizing the recovered talismans to commit large-scale robberies. Jackie and Jade move back to Uncle's shop, but with Toru now on the good side, there's no space for them. 
Forced to return to Section 13, they learn that the Dark Hand, armed with talismans, is attacking the financial district. Meanwhile, Shen Du, now a disembodied spirit, plots revenge. Imprisoned in the Netherworld by his furious siblings, he promises to free them by possessing Jackie's body. The siblings enchant Shen Du, ensuring his spirit remains in the host. As the Dark Hand, now led by Hak Fu, robs an armored truck, Shen Du attempts to possess Jackie but ends up trapped in Valmont's body. Shen Du, using Valmont's form, retrieves a magical book from Uncle's shop, unleashing the Shadow Khan to destroy Jackie and his allies. In the aftermath of the encounter with the Dark Hand and Shen Du, Jackie and Uncle, aided by Toru and Jade, regroup at the shop. To deduce Shen Du's plan, they realize he sought a book on ancient artifacts in Tibet. As they inventory Uncle's books, Jackie is shocked to discover that Jade has called for reinforcements. The J team, consisting of Viper, El Toro Fuerte, and his student Paco. Meanwhile, Shen Du, now trapped in Valman's body, leads the Dark Hand to Tibet to locate the Pon Ku box, a magical object connected to demon portals. As Jackie and Uncle trail the Dark Hand, Jade and the J-Team join the mission, setting the stage for a confrontation over the powerful Ponku box and the prevention of demon portals from opening. The Dark Hand attempts to decipher the Ponku box's riddle to locate the portal of Po Kong, the mountain demon in Tokyo. Meanwhile, Uncle, worried about the threat of the demon sorcerers, decides to train Toru as his assistant. Jade, feeling overlooked, uses a duplication spell on herself to attend school and accompany Jackie on a mission. The Dark Hand, led by Valmont and Shendu in Valmont's body, manages to open Po Kong's portal. Jackie, Jade, and the Jade team confront them. With the help of the multiplying Jades, they hold Po Kong back while Uncle and Toru arrive to seal the portal. However, the Dark Hand escapes with the Ponku box, leaving the chance to deal with the aftermath of multiple Jade duplicates. Toru discovers the solution and the original Jade is identified and saved from the continuous duplication. The Dark Hand plans to use a demon portal in Hollowlands Penitentiary, prompting Shen Du to orchestrate his own imprisonment to access the portal. To mislead the authorities, Shen Du forces the Dark Hand to rob a bank, claiming it is built on a demon portal. Uncle arrives after the Dark Hand is apprehended and clarifies that the bank isn't the portal. Ratso, Finn, and Valmont are sentenced to Hollow Lance as part of Shen Du's plan. Captain Black struggles to convince his superiors of the Dark Hand's plot and resorts to Plan B, involving Jackie infiltrating the prison disguised as an inmate. Jackie locates the Pon Ku box but accidentally releases Xiao Feng, the Wind Demon. With the help of Toru and Jade, Jackie battles Xiao Feng and ultimately banishes him. Captain Black hires Jackie as a trainer for Section 13 agents, giving him a reason to stay involved. Meanwhile, the Dark Hand discovers the Thunder Demon Chang Zhu's portal in Hollywood and sets out to open it. Jackie, accompanied by Jade and Toru, traces the portal to Mega Galactic Studios. Jade swipes the map from the Enforcers, leading to a confrontation. Inside the studio, the Dark Hand locates the portal and releases Chang Zhu. Jackie, disguised in a rubber costume, engages Chang Zhu while Jade ensures crowd safety during a ceremony. Uncle and Toru gather ingredients for the Chi spell. Despite Dark Hand interference, Uncle completes a spell using castanets and banishes Chang Zhu, but the Dark Hand escapes with the Ponku box. Jackie discovers an ancient demon-related book at a remote library. The Shadow Khan surround him, and the Enforcers try to capture him but fail. Meanwhile, Jade, inspired by a classmate's fake tattoo, traces a demonic symbol on her ankle using the demon archive, unknowingly marking herself with an evil tattoo. The Dark Hand, led by Shen Du, seeks the archive but is thwarted by the Shadow Khan, who now serve Jade due to her tattoo. When Jade's tattoo turns her into an evil queen, she takes over Section 13. Toru, disguised as a Shadow Khan, helps Jackie infiltrate Section 13 to erase Jade's tattoo leading to a confrontation with Chen Du. Jade regains control and destroys the demon archive, saving the day. The Dark Hand travels to Cape Canaveral to reach the Moon Demon's portal in outer space aboard the Saratoga shuttle. Jackie secretly follows them, and aboard the space station Niagara, he and Jade attempt to thwart the Dark Hand's plan. They manage to eject the Ponku box into space, but encounter challenges when Cosmo, the chimpanzee aboard the shuttle, retrieves it. So Lan, the Moon Demon, is released and Jackie, Jade, and Toru engage in a zero-gravity battle to banish him. 
Eventually, with strategic moves and the rabbit talisman, they succeed in sending Tzolan back to the netherworld, preventing the moon from causing havoc on Earth. Jackie discovers the armor of the eight immortals in an ancient structure, but the ninja Khan ambush him. Despite preventing the theft, the structure collapses and Jackie falls into a village. Uncle, seemingly obsessed with the demon sorcerer's conflict, urges Jackie to bring the armor to Spain. In Pamplona, Jackie encounters the Dark Hand aiming to release the Earth Demon Dai Gui with the Ponku Box. The situation intensifies with the running of the bulls and the Hak Fu snatches the box back. Meanwhile, Jade and Toru use a sleeping tea to calm Uncle, allowing Jade to communicate with him through the sleep talisman. Jackie, wearing the magical armor, faces Dai Gui while Toru and Jade attempt a chi spell to banish the demon. Despite a hiccup due to a misunderstood ingredient, Uncle awakens and helps banish Dai Gui, returning to his grumpy self afterward. At a baseball stadium in Boston, the Chance and Toru face the Dark Hand to thwart the release of Si Wu, the Sky Demon. As Jackie battles Chow and Ratso, Uncle and Toru work on a chi spell to banish Si Wu. However, Jade, rushing to the bathroom, unwittingly opens the portal, allowing Si Wu to escape. The demon, disguised as a human named Seymour, befriends Jade to reclaim his severe tail kept at Uncle's shop. Jade, unaware of his true identity, gives him a friendship medallion and invites him to a school dance. When Uncle coats Si Wu's tail with a chi spell, the demon kidnaps him to force its removal. Jackie and Toru track Uncle using a trail of mung beans, while Jade, armed with talismans, joins the pursuit. In the final confrontation, Si Wu steals his tail back, but Uncle activates the chi spell, banishing the sky demon. In Rome, Jackie and Uncle race to prevent the release of the last demon sorcerer, Bai Tsa, by the Dark Hand in the Colosseum. Bai Tsa escapes, and after a car accident, she temporarily turns into water before reforming. The Chans and Toru research Bai Tsa's connection with Atlantis, her former kingdom. Bai Tsa, disappointed with the ruins of Atlantis, decides to make San Francisco her new capital by flooding it. Meanwhile, Shen Du manipulates Valman's body, but Valman, fed up, seeks help from the chance, revealing Bai Tsa's plan. Valman guides them to Shen Du's hideout and discloses Bai Tsa's location. Uncle marks Valman to suppress Shen Du, and Jackie, Toru, Jade, Valman, and Hak Fu go to stop Bai Tsa's ritual. Despite some challenges, Uncle arrives in time to reverse Bai Tsa's spell and both Bai Tsa and Shen Du retreat. Uncle successfully banishes her, but Jade accidentally gets pulled into the netherworld, but Jade accidentally gets pulled into the netherworld with Bai Tsa. Realizing the only way to rescue Jade is through Shen Du's portal, they steal the Ponku box, leading to a confrontation with Shen Du and Hak Fu. Meanwhile, Uncle projects himself into the netherworld to contact Jade, debunking Shen Du's false claims. Jade, captured by Si Wu, stalls for time and exposes Shen Du's deception to the other demons. In Hong Kong, they open the portal at Moose World, but Hak Fu steals the Ponku box. Uncle's prepared banishing spell sends Shen Du back to the netherworld, causing chaos among the demons. Jade returns safely, and Shen Du faces the wrath of his siblings while Jade celebrates her reunion with her family and Valman revels in his freedom from Shen Du's influence. Shen Du, tortured by his siblings, unveils a plan to use the Book of Ages to rewrite reality and secure their victory. Meanwhile, in the mortal world, Shen Du possesses Jackie, altering history to create a world where he and his siblings rule as tyrants. Jade, retaining memories of the original reality, recruits Jackie and Uncle to undo the changes by stealing the talismans from Shen Du. In the altered world, they face challenges including Jackie's servitude and Uncle's role as a royal bookkeeper. Sneaking into Shen Du's bedroom, they attempt to retrieve the talismans, but the demon dragon awakens, setting the stage for a final confrontation. Thanks to the dog talisman, Jackie survives Shen Du's attack and, equipped with several talismans, escapes the demon dragon's tyrannical rule alongside Jade and Uncle. The trio, now joined by members of the J team, embarks on a mission to banish the demon sorcerers and undo Shen Du's alterations to reality. They retrieve Toru, El Toro Fuerte, Paco, and Viper, facing challenges and defeating demons along the way. The J team, armed with both martial arts skills and talismans, confronts Shen Du's siblings at the fortress containing the Book of Ages. 
A strategic use of the book's powers enables them to banish the demons and restore the original timeline, returning to Hong Kong untouched by Shen Du's reign, with the added companionship of El Toro, Paco, and Viper. Toru, mistakenly believed to be the chosen one by a group of monks, is escorted to the Ben Shui Temple in Bhutan for a ritual to awaken his thousand lifetime memories. Jackie is designated as Toru's defender against the Dark Chi warriors sent by Dao Long Wong. As Toru resists his role, Jay discovers his absence during the night and convinces him to embrace his responsibility. The monks commence the awakening ceremony, but Wong infiltrates the temple to summon his Dark Chi warriors from within. Despite Jackie's efforts and Jade wielding the Chosen One's walking stick, Toru fails to recall his past lives. Wong's defeat prompts the realization that Jade might be the true Chosen One as her Chi seems connected to the Yak Shepherd's stick. As the chants depart, the monks ponder the possibility that the Chosen One may have been found, albeit in an unexpected vessel. Jade dreams of becoming an action hero and facing her worst nightmare, presenting a lackluster What I Did During Summer Vacation essay. In reality, she implores Jackie to let her join the Jade team, investigating Jade thefts by billionaire Bartholomew Chang. Despite her persistence, Jackie denies her membership. The Jade team, now with Toru, enters Chang's martial arts tournament to uncover stolen Jade. Toru wins the sumo competition and the team infiltrates Chang's fortress. Jade's impulsiveness jeopardizes the mission, but they defeat Chang and his henchmen. Back at Section 13, Captain Black hints at future missions and Jade gets a thumbs up from Jackie, a step closer to Jade team membership. Turns out this entire tale was told in class by Jade, earning applause for her exciting tale. In a desperate bid to replenish the Dark Hand's depleted finances, Valmont proposes breaking into Section 13 to steal the 12 talismans. Simultaneously, Dark Chi wizard Dao Long Wong arrives with the same intent. Wong breaches Section 13's security effortlessly, but encounters the enforcers who snatch the talismans. Jade alerts Jackie, leading to a confrontation with Wong and the enforcers. Despite Jackie destroying the talismans, Uncle reveals that their powers will seek noble animals for containment. It means that all the 12 talismans have transferred their powers to animals corresponding to their names, and these animals are called nobles. Wong, now with his Dark Chi warriors, targets the power of the dog talisman, leading to a showdown at a dog show. The Chance, aided by a stray dog named Scruffy, discover he is the noble dog. A fierce battle ensues, and with Uncle's intervention, Wong is banished. The Chans prepare to find the remaining noble animals, safeguarding Scruffy at Section 13. In the next few episodes, the team encounters all the noble animals and prevents them from falling into the wrong hands. Uncle locates the noble monkey Haiku in Hawaii, and they join the ambassador from Japan to retrieve him. The Monkey King interrupts, capturing Jackie and Uncle, planning a bizarre revenge. Jade pursues Haiku, calming him and reuniting with the others. The Monkey King, jealous of Haiku's entertainment skills, kidnaps him and takes him to a volcano island. There, he attempts to cast a spell to erupt the volcano, but fails. Daolon Wong arrives, revealing the missing ingredient. Wong absorbs Haiku's power, causing him to transform into an elephant and break them free. The eruption occurs, but they escape unharmed, realizing it's a gelatin flow. The Monkey King's puppet is left submerged, concluding the bizarre adventure. Jackie retrieves the noble rooster in Malaysia, but faces the enforcers. Jade names the rooster Egbert, and they head to find the noble pig. They locate Mordecai at Farmer McDonald's farm, but face resistance. Jackie attempts to steal Mordecai at night, leading to chaos and the fight with McDonald's son. Egbert and Mordecai escape, and Daolon Wong appears, trying to absorb their powers. The Enforcers join forces with McDonald and the Chance to resist Wong's Dark Chi magic. Despite challenges, Jackie, Jade, Egbert, and Mordecai escape unharmed, and Wong retreats. Jackie decides to return Mordecai to McDonald, allowing him to keep Egbert as they head home. The Chance and Toru embark on a quest in the Himalayas to find the noble animal with the power of the Ox Talisman. They discover a yak with super strength, causing an avalanche. The enforcers intervene, but Jade's quick thinking saves the chance. Back at Daolong Wong's lair, Hak Fu defeats the enforcers and transforms into a Dark Chi warrior. Uncle attempts to transfer the Ox Talisman's power to a new vessel, but Wong interrupts, trapping Uncle's life force. Wong deduces the location of the Talisman's power and sends Hak Fu to retrieve it. 
Toru and Jade try to create a locator for the talisman. Jackie infiltrates Wong's lair to rescue Uncle's life force, successfully retrieving it despite encounters with the Enforcers. Toru works on a spell to release Uncle's life force, while Jackie confronts Huck Fu and Wong. Despite Jackie's efforts to sway Huck Fu, he remains loyal to Wong. Jackie disrupts Wong's spell, leading to a showdown between Huck Fu and Uncle. Huck Fu is thrown off a cliff and Wong is defeated by Toru's spell. With Uncle's life force restored, they aim to transfer the Ox Talisman's power back to the Yawk and bring it to safety at Section 13. Jade's school fair project takes an unexpected turn when she decides to exhibit all nine noble animals. Toru wins a Super Moose plush doll at a stall, intending to gift it to Jade. Meanwhile, Drew is impressed by Jade's exhibit and she tries to divert Jackie's attention. The Dark Chi warriors appear, causing chaos and making the animals stampede into the city. Disappointed, Jackie, Uncle, and Toru rush to retrieve the escaped animals. Despite initial setbacks, they manage to outsmart the Dark Chi warriors and bring the recovered animals to Section 13. However, five animals are still missing. Uncle and Toru work on a locator spell, but when Jackie and Jade surface, they find Scruffy, Haiku, Royal Medicine, the Snake, and the Yak waiting, as Jade trains Scruffy to herd the animals. Jackie and Jade reconcile and Drew starts believing Jade's stories. Toru is knocked unconscious by Valmont, who convinces him that he works for the Dark Hand and that Jackie is his enemy. Jackie, Jade, and Uncle discover Toru is missing and track him to Sri Lanka using a locator spell from a grape soda can, Toru's favorite drink. Toru, under Valmont's influence, arrives at a monastery and poses as a disciple. He is trying to learn the location of the hidden temple of the Golden Elephant. Jackie's group reaches the monastery and attempts to talk to Toru, but he attacks them, showing no recognition. Valmont successfully extracts the temple's location from the guru, Babur, and erases Babur's memories. Jackie's group follows Toru to the temple, encountering challenges like a riddle over boiling water. Valmont and Toru proceed while Jackie's group struggles with the riddles. Inside the temple, Toru is forced by Valmont to lift a golden elephant statue, triggering an attack from stone sentinels. During the fight, Toru starts feeling a connection with Jackie, despite his memory loss. Uncle formulates a spell to defeat the stone statues, and Toru gradually regains his sense of right and wrong. Uncle attempts to use a memory eraser device on Toru to restore his memories, but in the struggle, he accidentally erases his own memories instead. Toru refuses Valmont's orders to attack Jackie, and Valmont also accidentally erases his own memory. The challenge now is to restore Uncle's memories, prompting Jackie and Jay to embark on research. Then, in Re-Enter the Dragon, at Uncle's rare finds, the Chance attempt a dragon totem spell to locate the power of combustion but it fails due to the absence of living dragons on Earth. Daolong Wong, a dark chi wizard, contacts Shen Du in the netherworld and offers to restore him to life in exchange for the power of combustion. Wong plans to use a spell to create a new body for Shen Du. The Chans discover Wong's plot and confront him at his mansion hideout. During the battle, Wong tries to absorb the power of combustion, but Shen Du double-crosses him, reclaiming his powers. The Chans flee to Section 13, and Uncle works on a spell to defeat Shen Du. Shen Du pursues them, leading to a chase where Jackie tries to protect the animals containing talisman powers. In a final confrontation, Uncle, Toru, and Section 13 agents cast a spell that reverts Shen Du to a statue, separating his powers into the 12 talismans once more. Shen Du is sealed away, and the Chans keep Scruffy, the noble dog, as their own. In prison, Daolong Wong's attempt to summon Shadow Khan results in the awakening of Tarakudo, the king of the Shadow Khan. Tarakudo recruits the enforcers to rebuild his Shadow Khan army, leaving Wong imprisoned. The Chans and Toru confront Tarakudo, who reveals himself as the king of the Shadow Khan and lord of all Ani. Tarakudo seeks Shendu's mask, the source of Shadow Khan control. Jackie retrieves the mask, but it fuses with Chao, turning him into an Ani. The Chance, with Toru's help, discover the mask's weakness to Japanese steel. In a battle, they use a Ninja Khan's shuriken to remove the mask, dispersing the Shadow Khan. However, Tarakudo vows to find the other masks, setting the stage for a new quest to prevent the world's plunge into eternal darkness. In Captain Black's office, Jackie instructs him to lock the Oni mask in the Section 13 vault and not let anyone wear it. The team traces the next Oni mask to Tokyo, Japan. 
at a history museum, Tarakudo, the king of the Shadow Khan, and his enforcers led by Hak Fu ambush the chance. During the scuffle, Ratso accidentally wears the mask, becoming an Ani with control over Razor Khan Shadow Khan. The Chans escape, discovering the need for the Hana Fuda cards to find the location and removal ingredient of all nine Ani masks. After some struggle, they manage to extract the mask and bring it home. Back at Section 13, they secure it and Tarakudo, attempting to breach the vault, is repelled by an onion barrier. And now it's Ani magic versus onion magic. Jackie and Jade discover that the next Ani mask is in the San Francisco Museum of Natural History. Scruffy accidentally activates the magic cards, revealing the mask's location and the removal spell ingredient, Japanese rice. Farmer McDonald and his animals visit, causing chaos at Section 13. Huck Fu, under Tarakudo's orders, battles Jackie for the mask. During the struggle, Scruffy bites the mask, transforming into Spike, an Ani-controlled hound. Jade forms the Tea Troop, a super-powered team to combat Spike and the Shadow Khan, but Spike captures Jade and takes her to Koi Tower. Jackie, using the Rice Potion, attempts to remove the mask from Spike and, in a dramatic moment, Scruffy seemingly sacrifices himself. But it turns out he was just playing dead, revealing he knew how to obey. Tarakudo retreats as Scruffy, now back to normal, and the Tea Troop reunites with Jackie and Jade. Meanwhile, Farmer McDonald continues his search in Section 13. Jackie and Jade find an Ani mask in the Pacific Northwest, leading to a confrontation with Hak Fu. Captain Black unintentionally wears the mask, gaining powers but risking inevitable corruption. While Uncle and Toru work on a mask removal spell, Black's corruption escalates as he summons Sumo Khan to replace Section 13's agents. In an attempt to secure other Ani masks, Jade splits Black into Yin and Yang using talismans. Yang Black, still wearing the mask, is confronted by Jade, who uses the rabbit talisman to remove the mask, restoring Captain Black. With the mask safely stored, the immediate threat is averted. Jackie, Jade, and Toru retrieve an Oni mask of Ikazuki, the second in command to Tarakuda. Hoping to extract information, they animate the mask with the rat talisman's power. However, Ikazuki escapes, latching onto an enforcer, Finn. The Chans and Uncle search for Ikazuki, encountering Samurai Khan, and Toru gets captured. Uncle uses a shadow portal to locate Toru. In a warehouse, Ikazuki tries to force Toru to reveal the mask removal potion, and Finn accidentally drops it. The Chans arrive and the fight ensues, and Finn manages to remove the mask using the potion, reconciling with Uncle and Toru. The quest for obtaining all nine of the masks continues in the next few episodes until the Shadow Eaters. Jackie, Uncle, and Jade search for the eighth Oni mask in Bayo, but Jade loses the Hanafuda card. They find the mask in a shack, which turns out to be the set of psychic Miss Kimber. Hak Fu seizes the mask and Miss Kimber claims it's his destiny. In a swamp chase, the mask ends up on Hak Fu's face, and he summons Minicon. Back at the shop, Uncle studies a captured Minicon, discovering it eats shadows and induces a coma. Toru falls victim and the Minicon grows. Jackie and Jade use Minicon vacuums to prevent shadow eating. Hak Fu sends Minicon to feast on shadows across the city. Jackie and Jade struggle against the growing Minicon menace until Uncle learns the last ingredient for the removal spell from Miss Kimber. Jackie removes Hak Fu's mask, ending the shadow feast and saving Toru. Jackie and Uncle track Daolong Wong to a temple in the Far East, where Wong seeks the Deja Wu stone to alter his past and regain powers. Jade, having already found the stone, loses it to Wong. Jackie attempts to stop Wong and both disappear into the past. Uncle uses a locator spell to find Jackie, who experiences various pivotal moments from his past, risking huge changes to the timeline. Uncle creates portals for Jackie to encounter Wong and locate the stone. As Jackie revisits past events, he faces challenges and risks altering history. Ultimately, Jackie retrieves the Deja Vu stone in Bavaria, but Wong follows. After a struggle, Jackie returns to the present, realizing Jade's importance in saving him. Jade, overjoyed, embraces Jackie, who acknowledges her contributions. As San Francisco prepares for Chinese New Year, Uncle's Chi detector reveals a disturbance, leading them to a mysterious woman who turns out to be Jade from the future. Future Jade warns them about Drago, Shendu's son, who is after her. Present Jade and Future Jade escape from Drago's attack, revealing a dragon talisman that Drago destroys. 
Future Jade explains that Drago followed her into the past to prevent her from altering the timeline. She leads them in a chase to evade Drago, using her knowledge of magic to defend against them. Future Jade reveals that Drago's goal is to stop her from preventing Chandu's resurrection in the future. To do so, they must destroy Dragon's Teeth buried in the city before midnight. Uncle discovers the Teeth location but is confronted by Drago. The three, along with Jackie, confront Drago, who captures Uncle and demands the portal spell from the future Jade. Present Jade intervenes, destroying the teeth and preventing Shendu's resurrection. Drago is imprisoned at Section 13, and Future Jade bids farewell, leaving advice for Present Jade. As she leaves, Future Jade credits Jackie for shaping who she became. In the search for the final Oni Mask at the ocean's depths, Jackie and Jade find it on a sunken ship, but realize the danger when Tarakudo unexpectedly appears. Back at Section 13, placing all nine masks together shatters them, releasing the Ani Generals. The Ani summon Shadow Khan to spread darkness, prompting the chance to seek a way to defeat Tarakudo. Despite facing opposition from the Ani Generals, the J-Team splits up to confront them. However, Tarakudo overwhelms them, capturing them all. Just at that moment, Jade accidentally reveals a hidden tenth mask, and Uncle guides Toru to the Shadow Realm to retrieve it. Toru returns corrupted but succeeds in obtaining the mask. Tarakudo, now in a physical form, battles the Jade team but is ultimately defeated when Jade places the mask on his face, imprisoning him along with the Ani generals and Shadow Khan inside it. The Chans finally end their quest to prevent eternal darkness. So this was Jackie Chan Adventures from the beginning to the very end. Now what a show. Besides the cool narrative, it takes you on a trip on the most famous spots around the globe. Which one of the episodes did you like the most? Do let us know down in the comments, and if you enjoyed it, drop us a like, subscribe to our channel, and press that bell icon to never miss an update from us. Also, let us know what other series you want us to cover next. As always, thanks for watching. Peace!